What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe, and today we are talking about a series called Art of the Adept, which was a series that was recommended by a user on Twitter known as Cinna Palm, uh, and they also recommended this series with King's Dark Tidings. They said that Kel Cade is a good friend of the author of uh, Art of the Adept. Um, And then I saw a bunch of other people that we know in this conversation, like Shantanu um, and uh, Hobbit Hole Books, aka Miggins. Um, Philip Chase is is tagged here and and Petrick. So there's a lot of of people that we're very familiar with. And it seemed like everybody had really good things to say about it. Um, And so, since Gabe is my um, (laughs) reading guinea pig, I (laughs) I sent it over to him and I was like, hey, you should check out this series and tell me if it's any good. Uh, And I think it was while we were doing our, when we were doing that Star Wars book, uh, Heir to the Empire, and we were like, oh, what have we all been reading? And you mentioned this series, you had started it, and you were like, dude, it's so good, you need to read it. And at first I was like, yeah, at first he does this. He's like, ah, oh, OK, I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll read it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, seriously, yeah. read it. Yeah, because I I think that I was worried. Um, And again, what what really sucks about looking for new books is that it is almost impossible not to judge a book by its cover unless people are like, no, it's really good. You need to read it. And I saw the cover for this book and I'm like, oh, it's like a lit RPG or something. And then Gabe, you were like, no, it's not like it's not a lit RPG at (laughs) all. There's there's no element of that. There's not even any elements of like progression magic or or anything like that. It's just just a fantasy series. And so I started reading it and I fell in love with it. And before too long, I was like, oh my God, this is King Killer. Like this mm-hmm. is totally King Killer. Yep. And I feel like it, this is just perfect timing because right now, uh, and I just made a video of this. It's up on our channel if you guys would like to see it. I don't know when you guys are seeing this episode. It might be from a couple weeks ago. Um, but Patrick Rothfuss is in some hot water right now because he did a charity stream I think a year and a half ago, maybe more, where he said, if we get up to like $700,000, then I'll release a chapter from the third book. And King Killer fans, man, they want that third book. And so people came out in droves and got it to seven over $700,000 for this charity. And a year and a half later, he still has not released that chapter. Harsh. And people are really upset. He came out with an apology video recently uh, that literally nowhere in the video, nowhere in his apology Does video. He say, I'm sorry. He did. He doesn't say I'm sorry. He doesn't say I'm a, I apologize or anything. The yep. closest he gets is saying, yeah, I feel really bad. And it's like, man, that's no, not, don't. that's no, not an don't. apology. Like that's yeah. not, that's you don't not feel bad about shit. Your uh, PR guys telling you, you better do this. Cause everybody's crawling up my ass right now right yeah it's just like oh man and you just like shifted the blame onto so many other things and i'm just like dude like i'm just i'm done giving him my money for anything i'm done like obviously i love the king killer chronicles i will always reread those books i i have such a massive fondness for them um but of course, I've been upset that we don't have the third book after I think it's been 12, almost 12 years now. That's crazy. So when I started this, and especially as I got into the second book, I was like, oh, my God, this is scratching the King Killer itch. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you ha- heard about this book, Gabe, but there was a book that came out a while ago called uh, The First Binding. And people- Oh, yeah. And people were saying, yeah, people were saying like, oh, it's the new King Killer. It's really awesome. But then once you actually started like reading reviews for it, people were like, no, it's exactly King Killer. 
Like mm. it is like beat for beat. It is Oof. King Killer. Yeah. And I'm like, man, like that that would be good in a pinch if you just like really needed something that was yeah. like uber similar to King Killer. But I feel like that's just kind of a rip off at that point. Yeah. Um, but this, I don't feel this is not that at all, nope. but it, it fills that hole that King killer left. Right. Like I, I feel like it's just the perfect, it, it gives off so many King killer vibes while you're reading it. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but anyway, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about today. We're going to be, uh, doing some spoiler free stuff for art of the adept. We're going to be talking about why we like it. Uh, what we thought of uh, the first couple books I've only read into about a third of the third book I think there's five books total or four books total um, and I'm I'm honestly not even sure if it's a, a finished series like I hopefully it's not yeah like I well yeah you could go one of two ways about that like part of me hopes that it's a finished series because then like we already have the end of it and we can see like how it ends but then another part of me is like, this is one of those series that I kind of want to go on forever. Like, I kind of just want to be reading. I want to read like 17 of these books because I, I love five, them. Five books. Okay. Is it and, ended? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's ended. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, anyways, we're going to be talking about this book. Uh, we're going to talk about our time with it. Uh, definitely going to be like recommending it to you guys. Um. But yeah, I guess at, this whole intro has been such a discombobulation of random thought from me. But I'll just say, you know, like, subscribe, uh, all that stuff, all that YouTube stuff. You can reach out to us on uh, Twitter, Discord, and we also have a Patreon if you would like to support us there. That always helps us pay for like microphones and green screens and Adobe Premiere and all that stuff. So um yeah if you'd like to be part of the community over there that would be awesome uh but mostly we would just love to hear from you uh in the comments or whatever um and so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this content let's let's get on to it um so i guess should i should i do like a quick description of sure. what is kind of happening in the first book yeah so we're we're following this guy named will and as far as I can remember, he's the only POV besides a couple times. Like there was one time at the end of the second book. And so far there's been one time in the third book where it's switched POV to someone else. But mostly you're just following Will. Yep. And he's uh, a kind of, it's like the classic, it's the classic like farm boy meets wise old mentor kind of trope but it's done in a really unique way it's done in a way that doesn't feel um super derivative like yes it is a trope and you know it does kind of follow that classic style that classic storytelling style of farm boy becomes like big hero kind of kind of thing but i feel like it's done cleverly enough and well enough to where it feels like a new like a reinvention of that i guess um but some stuff happens early on where he he i think he unwittingly or unknowingly uses magic to heal a girl like a noble's daughter right yep. and they from what i remember I'm, it, it I, wasn't it wasn't a noble's daughter it was the it was the in the little village he lives in it was the tanners right um, yeah and the tanner's and he, daughter was very sick and he they his mom who's the healer was busy and so they called you know he was the only one that could do it and he went over there and i actually think and i don't i guess i should be careful yeah the gist of it is that he healed her using magic and uh, and they freak out and whip him right they, the tanner that yeah that's how he gets like that scar across his face or whatever no, the scars it's... from the the coach whip the snake, in the very beginning. Oh, okay. So that's that's what is I was that, thinking. Is that what okay. you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Anyway, so he gets he gets recognized, uh, kind of for like this magical ability, and his mom basically takes him to live with this old 
hermit in the woods essentially yep and she's like here like you like you need to help him with this you know how to deal with this and everyone else in the town like they're so far removed from the rest of the world that they don't believe that magic exists or anything like that uh but his mom knows that this hermit in the woods is like kind of a some some sort of wizard or mage or something and she's like can you help my son so he ends up staying with him for like essentially years and um it's it's hard not to go into spoilers yeah, but, it but you know it is. It, if you're looking at it from like a bird's eye view without going into specifics essentially what happens is he he meets this mentor and this guy is just a crotchety old just Fuck. yeah just a complete like jackass yep. and man he was easily my favorite character of the first book like he was so awesome he's not like he's not like a crotchety old man in like an annoying way he's super funny he's super clever with how he like makes fun of will and i think what i loved about will's time with this old guy so much is that um it wasn't the kind of thing where the farm boy goes to the wise old mentor and suddenly he's just learning magic and and he's like he can shoot fireballs and stuff dude for like several years this old guy is essentially torturing him (laughs) with like without teaching him any magic yeah he's he like he doesn't hardly learn any magic but he will has to learn how to control the um the turin inside him and the turin is kind of like your mana uh it's kind of like your your reserve of magic and the interesting thing about this world too is that the the people who would otherwise be wizards if you if you use too much of your turn in a spell it can take a week off your life it can take a month off your life and so with every spell you do it's reducing your lifespan essentially and so people kind of stopped being wizards because they were all dying at like age 30 (laughs) because they were just taking so much time off their life um but will has a way of kind of combating that and so does this old man and he teaches him a way to control his mana or turin in a way where you know he can have like a prolonged lifespan and it doesn't feel like a get out of jail free card like normally that kind of thing would be like oh of course he has some special way to avoid like the biggest problem with magic in this world but it's it's earned over yeah, it's earned. so many chapters. Like it's mm-hmm. not something that is given to him. It's not something that comes easily to him. Um, and honestly, it, brutally earned. Yes, exactly. And essentially what his mentor is doing and, and all this is at the beginning of the book, so it's not really spoiling anything, but essentially what his mentor is doing is putting this spell on him so that will is in pain all the time unless he can learn to compress his turin and keep it small because the bigger his turin burns the more life kind of he loses um and so so yeah it's like a brutal way to learn this but it makes him such a stronger person in the end even later in the books when he meets other people who have magical abilities they're like what do you mean your spell doesn't like cost you that much to use? Like people just like don't understand it because no one's taught this way anymore. Um, And I think, you know, that's, that's what I really loved about name of the wind is that quote when he's, when he's at the beginning, when he's talking with um, Abernathy, when he's on the road with Abernathy. And then later when he gets to the university, he is having to put in actual, physical work to learn how to use this magic system and will is kind of going through like a very similar thing although i think will may have even had a tougher time than quote Hmm. um but yeah so from there you know without going into too many spoilers something happens in the village where essentially it is attacked and will has to go out into the world and kind of find his own way and it's similar to King Killer in the way where it's like 
I like I I wouldn't be able to say exactly like what the storyline is without spoiling a whole lot of stuff because in Name of the Wind, Quoth just kind of goes into the world and then we follow his story. There's not like there's not like a I mean like there is a goal but there's not like okay this is how I get closer to my goal and like you're following like the whole arc. It's kind of just like this guy just living his life trying to be like a, as good a person as he can and and that's kind of what will is doing in these books we're just following following him from situation to situation to situation yep um and i think i think that's what i liked about it so much yeah. it reminded me so much of king killer in that way do you have any thoughts on uh just like the the story in general or the character of yeah will no or I, anything? I think i think you said it said it really well i totally agree honestly when i was when i was reading it i didn't you know i thought of king killer but i didn't it's it's almost so it's it's the same in some ways but it's almost so different that i never really correlated it much oh interesting yeah um cuz i did i did think that it was very similar but the way that the story was written and kind of maybe maybe the comedic value something was just different and i really oh, yeah, i really liked that um and yeah, so I'm, it's, I, it's a book that I am now like trying to find time, mm -hmm. like right. or making time to be able to listen to. Whereas yeah. lately I haven't been doing that a whole lot. Great books I've been listening to, but I'm like, for instance, like right before this podcast, I was like, I want to go get a drink, mm -hmm. listen to the book because right. you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's it. You want to know what happens next. Yeah, dude. Like I was, I couldn't listen in here and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go for a 20 minute drive and finish oh. the, finish the third book. Okay. Interesting. So. Yeah. I, I feel the exact same way. I think that it's been, you know, you, you and I have talked about this over text where it's like, uh, it's been a long time since something like King's Dark Tidings or something where, I've been like, it, it's, it's, it's that feeling of like, oh my God, we found a new series. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just like that feeling of like, oh, we're going to read every single one of these yeah. books. And it's well, I remember even texting time. you that I was like, dude, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going, I'm going all the way through. Yep. Like, I don't know if you have books planned, but they're not going to get read until yeah, this is I know. done. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel the same way. Yeah. I'm like, I'm absolutely like not stopping until we get to, uh, until we until we get through this yeah. series because at this point i'm like i just need to know what happens i want to know like where will ends up because where i'm at in the story i'm just like i just don't know like how this ends well for him or like how this ends at yep. all for him and i i just have to know and mostly i you know there's not even no that's not right i was gonna say there's not necessarily like this whole intriguing thing about the plot but there is in every book there's some sort of arc that has you intrigued enough to want to know how it's resolved but i think the most the the most fun moments in this book uh and this is why it reminds me so much of king killer is just kind of the quiet moments where he's with his friends or where he's just doing stuff around town or buying mm. armor or haggling with a merchant or something and it's not necessarily the big like like oh figure out the mystery and figure out like all the plot points and stuff like that stuff is awesome but for me i just love just like listening to just will go about his daily business and you know as you get further in the books like kind of the the court intrigue and like dealing with the nobility and, yep. and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I think it's just a good find. And I'm so glad this guy on Twitter. Yeah. It because I had never heard of this series. And if I had seen this book cover on Audible, I would have passed right over it because. Really? Because I was like, fuck, dude, it looks cool. Because oh, like really? you. Yeah. Yeah. You you sent me over the you're like, oh, somebody recommended this. And I was like, all right, I'll put up my notes. Yeah. And then the next day at work, I, you know, I was like, I need something to listen to. So I opened it up and I was like, all right, OK, uh, this this looks cool. What nice. did you not like about it? I don't know. I just think it looks um, it just looks kind of cheap and like YA and like 
I think that's why I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah, I I don't know. I just don't. I just don't really like. The well, this is a covers. great example for you to just fucking quit judging shit by the way that it looks, dude. So here's here's the thing though, because I think um, you know the the covers aren't bad from like an artistic quality standpoint. It's just it's just a weird look like it, it makes the book look ya it makes it look lit rpg or progression fantasy which aren't bad things but it i don't feel like it's representative of what's like between the covers i feel mm. like because the book i i feel like the book is not ya in no, the slightest certainly, certainly not even close to ya yeah and it's very adult yeah and again, not that YA is a bad thing, but sometimes you're just not looking for YA. And a lot of times I just kind of skip over YA looking stuff or lit RPG looking stuff. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I just, I don't know. There was something about these covers that just wasn't clicking with me. Um, and I, I think that if I had just seen them in audible, I would have been like, I don't know what that is. It looks cheap or something and just skipped right over it. Yeah um but you, you and your window shopping yeah and, and i think it's it's what hard if, what do you ever like do you ever like instead of just looking at the cover do you ever just like read really quick like you know go to the description and you read you're like okay yeah that's stupid never mind yeah t- typically i do typically i'll read yeah. the description but sometimes okay. if there's a certain if there's a certain artistic quality to nuance covers that it's missing that you don't like what's that like a nuance it's not that's turning you off type thing or yeah i think like if the cover just doesn't look serious enough like lately what's become really popular with like uh lit rpg and progression fantasy and um just a lot of like self-pub stuff is kind of anime ish looking covers with like yeah. this super like flary font and to me it just it looks so like i like anime like i you know for the most part i and yeah. you know i have i have a few anime series that i enjoy watching but on a book cover it just feels really like juvenile and trying to be like edgy i guess hmm. and so a lot of times i see those covers and i've tried those books that have like that font and that like art yeah. style and sure enough they've been something like what's in between the covers just didn't click with me Gotcha. And, and so I think that, you know, especially for self-pub authors, since they and I, I don't even know if this is self-pub or not. Uh, for, no, it's not. It's it's podium. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And so I, I think with a lot of self-pub authors, it's, you know, they, they have a lot of control over what goes on their cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I tend to be a harsh critic of it because I'm like, if that's what you wanted on your cover, what does that say about like what's in your book, I guess? And that, yeah, that, that's fair. That, that makes sense. That's yeah. totally fair. Cause it's like, if, if you have that much control over it and you can decide what's on the outside and you've also decided what's on the inside, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's like super judgmental, but it, and even, even if I listen, there's been so many books that I've read and absolutely loved that have terrible cover art. Yeah. Like I could go through my audible library and probably pick out at least 10 to 15 books that have terrible cover art, but I love the book. And so in like, logically, I know that a book cover does not, you know, represent what is on the inside the majority of the time, but still there's some like subconscious thing there's something when when you're scrolling through hundreds of books and you're trying to find something it kind of behooves the the author to pick a a cover art that's going to be representative of their book and that's going to stand out and it's going to pop um but anyway that's a whole other video (laughs) yeah i I totally agree i do agree but yeah, I think. Uh, oh, hi, Hank. Here he is. Here's a doggo. There he is. Here he is. Here's the boy. Oh, look at him. <laughs> He's gaining so some long weight. since I've seen that dog. Yeah, I good. Know. He's healthy. He's healthy. Yeah, good boy. Um, but yeah, okay. You gotta sit down though. But yeah. So anyway, the uh, I, you know, once once Gabe said like, yeah, you need to read this book, like, 
pretty much from there any like as soon as somebody like actually recommends it yeah. and is like no i read it and it's good then all that stuff goes out the window and oh, i'm like for sure for i'm sure. like okay it doesn't really matter what the cover looks like if somebody yeah. i know is directly recommending it to me <laughs> just <laughs> like, mm, you taste good <laughs> You got a pretty mouth. <laughs> you got a pretty mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Hopefully um, that makes somebody laugh. <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, I think that for people that are itching for more King Killer, this is going to be a perfect read. Uh, so far, I think the second book was the most King Killer that it felt. Uh, the first book, I I didn't really quite get King Killer vibes until like later, and then like especially at the very end of the first book, that felt yeah. very King Killer. Um, and then all of the second book felt super King Killer without being derivative. And the third book, I haven't quite made my mind up on it yet. I I'm obviously enjoying it, but um, yeah, it's it's really good, and I would probably say that it feels probably less king killer than the second one does right yeah but again it's fucking incredible so yeah. not in any type of bad way yeah i mean i think like even you know king killer or not i think that after just the first i i think it yeah took... yeah you'll get hooked dude like read yeah. it read it with the like oh my gosh this is like king killer and you'll get hooked for way different reasons than you yes. like you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah exactly like that's that's the like, whole it'll thing it'll pull you in yeah, like this book, like I like it because it reminds me of King Killer. But, but then on but top I, of that, you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, there's so much more, you know, cool yeah, there, shit going on. There's a Not, whole other yeah. list of reasons to yeah. love it other than yeah. like the King Killer. But for like those of us out there that are waiting for that third book, uh, that third King Killer book, mm -hmm. and are a little irritated with Patrick Rothfuss right now, man, this is a good option. Like this. There you go. This really, this really scratches the itch to where to the point where like there were times in the second book where I'm like, oh man, it feels like I'm kind of like experiencing King Killer again because they're like, I guess like very very light spoilers. Mm -hmm. There's kind of a university aspect yeah. to the second yep. book, um, and all of that felt very very King Killer, totally. and um. Yeah, I was just like, man, and obviously it doesn't have the pros. It doesn't have a lot of the complex, like theory interweaving, like crazy, the the crazy matrix of theories mm -hmm. that runs throughout the King Killer. It doesn't quite have that from what I've seen so far. Um, but like all like the situations that Will finds him in feels like situations that quoth would find himself yeah. in yeah and will kind of is clever and uses what magic he has to like get out of things in a clever way and he he thinks about things in a different way than most of the other people do um and so i think a lot of that really reminded me of of king killer as well uh in a good way in a in yeah. a very good way um totally. So yeah, what do you what do you think about the character of Will? I freaking love his character, dude. Yeah. I think I think that he he is the perfect amount the perfect amount of innocent, the perfect amount of bold, mm -hmm. and the perfect amount of wit, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um there's of course some scenes, you know, where he's not, you know, there's some stuff that goes over his head right as yeah. most people there will be shit that goes over their head but i think overall i've i'm really like really just kind of head over heels for his character yeah i think in all aspects of his life especially now where i'm at like you know he's just becoming a person that i wanted him to be right yeah yeah so i'm i'm stoked and all the other characters too mm -hmm. uh i'm not gonna say names but there's several that i love very much there's a yeah. big really big guy named tiny that doesn't mm -hmm. give anything away love yeah. tiny love he's tiny. awesome yeah um and yeah i'm just i just love the the relationships are so so good <clears throat> the romance is so good um 
the yeah. hate is so good. Yeah. You know, there's and the lies are so good. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, it just it hits every every box that I have to be checked, it's checking without fail. Yeah. I I don't want to say who the like villain is, but there is there is a villain that kind of becomes ever present in Will's life. And I think that he is written so well. Yes. And oh man, it's the perfect amount of do you, you remember uh like in the Hunger Games, what was his name? Snow, the guy that like yeah. was like yep. the head of the Capitol. Mm-hmm. The villain reminds me of that to where yeah, he's totally. he's, a, he's very like polite and courteous, mm-hmm. but there is a razor sharp like intellect and oh, yeah. like cunning and yep. deviousness underneath all of that mm-hmm. and he will not hesitate to just outright kill you if it serves his purposes yeah, to do so totally but, but on top of that like you could also be having like such a pleasant conversation with him and then it just turns like that yep and yeah, dude, i know exactly I, the scene you're talking about yeah too. oh my god I exactly love, the scene you're talking about I, I love those moments yeah so much um i just i just think he's written incredibly well and i'm anytime he shows up in a scene i'm like oh man this is either gonna go really really well or it's or gonna go really really, really, really bad, bad. <laughs> yeah and oh yeah. man i love i live for those moments yeah um and then we got uh you know, this isn't like spoilers or anything, but there's a girl named Janice and she is a fantastic character. Mm-hmm. I, I love her so much. Um, And there, there's kind of like, th- there's two characters. I, I honestly can't even remember their names. Um, There's two characters that get introduced. I think in the second book uh, that will kind of becomes friends with. And I thought they were going to be like the King killer, like, will and simon characters where they become like his two like best Mm. friends yeah and i was a little bummed to see that they didn't although one of them uh i wish i could remember his name that that's how little they appear there's there's seth seth is one Uh, of them what's the other one roman or rome something like that something like that say roman yeah uh but yeah one one of them is like very funny and very like like charismatic and stuff Mm -hmm. and he's always fun to to listen to but i wish they were like a little bit more present in his life but i think the author does a good job of the the kind of university that is in this world i feel like the author does a good job of making it feel alive with a lot of different types of characters and a lot of different types of people that all have very different like personalities and characteristics and stuff and it does kind of feel like that king killer like when he gets to the university and he's got like his alchemy instructor and his alchemy instructor is very different from like you know the uh mathematics instructor yeah or like the sympathy instructor like Mm -hmm. they're all like they all very unique personalities and i feel like this author did that really really well this isn't like any i'm not really adding anything more to the conversation but i yeah i just want to reiterate my point on the relationships because specifically there's you know some love relationships Mm -hmm. that happen right that are so confusing and so like but it's all like it just made me really feel yeah you know for this person that like has very real emotions and is going through shit that i went through you know what i mean like yeah so yeah i don't know and i feel like that's a theme throughout well we'll see four and five but yeah uh, yeah yeah Yeah, i i I think especially in the second book and, and in the first one too uh we we do see you know a couple like a major romance and kind of like a minor romance and and stuff and i think it's just done really well i usually i usually tend to really like romance in fantasy books that's that's where a lot of the um i guess emotional drive for me comes from like when there's a really well written romance i i feel like that usually hits me right in the feels and this one definitely does it really well it definitely does it in a way that i have never seen before like i legitimately have not seen a similar romance to this play out in a book before 
And that's really cool because I feel like, you know, I was, I was looking at my audible library <laughs> yesterday and I think I have 240 books in there. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, one. at this point I've read. You almost so have a book for every day of the year, dude. Yeah, Get exactly. A couple, couple more books. Exactly. And I think that I've, I've read so many books at this point where it's like, I see a lot of the same kind of romances playing out again. Uh, they're all a little bit different, but, you know, similar tropes and similar things kind of happening. Um, and I was really surprised by this one because I was like, oh, I was not, I was le legitimately not expecting like yeah. how this all neither, played out. Neither was I. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I guess uh, before we, you know, I, I don't know if you have time tonight. Maybe we could talk a little bit about spoilers for a few minutes. But be before we do, um, so I am about a third of the way into the third book. I can definitely say that I love the first two. And so far, I really like the third one. When you so, when you got so... through the third one, did, was it as good? Wait, so you say you loved the first two and really liked the third. Is that less than loved, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Like re like really liked? Like you're just like, all right, I'll suffer through this? Or you no, like no, you no, enjoyed no. it, I... but it wasn't like... Right, you know. yeah. Like, okay. So again, and this is why I'm asking, because I'm only yeah. a third of the way through it. Yeah. And to the point where I'm at now, I'm like, like if the first two were a 10, this one is like an eight. Seven? Eight? Okay. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that that... I think your number will go up by okay. the time you by the time you finish it. Um and if it doesn't, it will at the very end. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh but I, I enjoyed it. It was it's definitely kind of a you know, a little bit of a different format, but I, I really, really liked it and I I felt the same eagerness to move on to the next one to right. go more because the last one was fucking cool. So Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to, to the ending. The, series. the ending, though, dude. Oh, I can't wait to talk to I'm, you about it. I'm oh so my excited. Gosh. Yeah. yeah no. So, see, so yeah, I guess we'll say that too. Is you know, once we finish this series, oh, um, dude. yeah, Big we'll deep we'll, dive. Yeah, Absolutely, we'll, we'll definitely be doing like a spoiler, a spoiler deep dive. I'll call um, out of work to do a deep dive on this fucking series, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I. Again, I'm just like I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. I think that uh, you know, I, I I think I mentioned on Twitter the other day that this is probably the most surprising book of the mm. year for me. Yep. Um, or at least totally. one of them. Like probably probably the Harry Potter series was the most surprising yeah. series of the year for me. But I think that this is without a doubt a close second. Like for when sure. I when I went into this book, I was not expecting to love it right sorry guys. yeah i'm oh, like hickming like crazy no no you're good and i totally agree i was i was so pleasantly surprised and i think i told spencer this over text but like this series is quickly you know as a runner-up with some of my favorite like series cradle and King cradle Stark. and he who fights with monsters and all those it's yeah like I have a feeling that by the time i finish this series it will be my number one favorite series that i've ever read Ooh, you think so? I do. Ooh, even like above Cradle and stuff like that? Dude, the way it's going right now, I'm enjoying it so much that, yeah, yeah. Un unless they unless they fuck off in the fourth and fifth <laughs> right? book, yeah. and then yeah, obviously sure. not, but right. if, it, if, it, if it maintains the, the pace, pace and yeah. continues to get better than it already is, then yeah, totally. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's a tough one. Like, I don't know... Like I'm loving this series so much. I don't know if I could say that it would ever be in like my top three or anything, but I will say that it is giving me that same feeling I got when I read something like King's Dark Tidings or yeah. whatever, where I'm like, oh, this is an there's, awesome new series. Yeah, there's and potential. There's yeah. Potential like there. Like I will definitely be rereading this series yep. forever. Like this will be like in, in my loop of like, King's Dark Tidings, Dresden Files, Harry Potter, like yeah. all, all that whole yeah. cycle of rereads. Uh, this this is definitely getting added to it because, yeah, I'm just I'm having such a good such a good time with it. 
It'll definitely be interesting to get to the end of this year. I'm so excited to do our thing in December where we do like our end of the year kind of yeah. discussion. Yeah. Um, and we pick like our top five like favorite books for the year because like I I could definitely see this being in my top five for for this year. Um for sure. So I, I'm sure I'm sure that it places somewhere on that list at the end of the year so far I, I, like you said unless they totally fuck up the fourth and fifth book yeah uh so far it's it's well on its way to being in my top five for the year so the author that wrote this book have we even said his name yet i'm so sorry whoever author you are michael you'll manning just, yeah Mike, you have to edit it in in the very beginning yeah <laughs> i'll just like freeze frame just michael manning michael manning <laughs> just, or just do like the ai like voice <laughs> yeah. like yeah. michael manning yeah <laughs> <laughs> like that was for you we love your book Books. yes <laughs> but um but yeah it definitely feels like like the author loved king killer but had his own idea but was it. also yeah. like I love King Killer so much that I'm going to bring some of these similar ideas Elements, into yeah. my story mm-hmm. um, and kind of mix them together. And I just totally. well said that was that's like exactly how I felt. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll end off on that. Uh, we'll have a link to the audiobook down below. And I will say do the audiobook. This is narrated by the same oh. guy that does the Red Rising books, yeah. and he's so fucking good. Yep, so good. I he's yeah, so, so good. good. Oh man, I I loved him in Red Rising, and I I'm loving him in these books. He does all the different voices. Yep, he does like, and you can always tell when someone is like stressed out or like when oh yeah, someone or is, like, like giggling worried. or kind of like yes. laughing at somebody. Oh, oh man, man. excellent, excellent. He, he nails it. There was even, I wish I could remember the exact scene, but there was one that he did where like someone was like out of breath or something. And the way that he spoke that it sounded like it didn't just sound like, Oh my no, God. It sounded like, like he it just sounded, got done running. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was like, like I wouldn't have been surprised if he like ran on a treadmill for like for a sure. few minutes and then, and then did then the read line. his lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I totally did. It's absolutely incredible. It's so good um so yeah definitely definitely check check this out um again if you're a king killer fan you're gonna love this you have no reason not to try it i think it's probably gonna be one of your best reads of the year if you give it a chance especially if you get through book two i think book two book two was not just like a phenomenal part of the series i think it was just like a phenomenal book like hands right. down yeah. for the year yeah. like totally book, book two is definitely my favorite so far although i really did love book one as well so i don't know it's, it's a hard decision yep <laughs> um all right so yeah we're gonna end our spoiler free thoughts there gabe do you want to do some quick spoilers just like some overall yeah, thoughts i do want to do some quick overall thoughts as okay. long as it is quick okay so but yes Everybody, we're going to go into uh, a spoiler section. So if you've read the first, like, two books, Gabe isn't going to spoil the third book for me. Nope. <laughs> well, not. Um, so if, <clears throat> if, you know, if you guys have read the first two books in this series, then you could stick around and hang out. Uh, otherwise, spoilers in three, two, one, you've been warned. All right, what are you thinking, Gabe? Oh man, there's a lot, dude. Yes, there's a lot. So, so I need to since I'm ahead of you, I so I do want to ask like right where you are like right now, if you can remember. Right. So he or anything close to it. So I'll I'll, I'll say this: book two ends with just to refresh your memory. Book two ends with them getting married. Yeah. And okay. The the Faye grandma taking Celine. Celine. Okay. All right. Cool. Gotcha. And then gotcha. where where I'm at now is he is protecting her friend uh Leanne or whatever yep. her name is. Yeah, Liana, I think, or something. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so what do you think about Celine? Uh, that's a question I've been wanting to ask you. Yeah. Because you sent me a text, and you're like, fucking just get with 
Janice. Jenny or what? Yeah, Janice. Janice. Just yeah. get with her. What the fuck? And I was like, I totally disagree. Oh, man. Yeah. I completely I... disagree with you 100%. I think Celine and him are just fucking perfect. Oh, man. Yeah. They're, they're kind of set up as like these soulmates, but yeah. she is so much more trouble than she's worth. Um, and I think, you know, Celine is kind of the Denna of this world. And I'm so glad that this author didn't write her in the same way as Denna, where Denna comes off very like, just almost like cruel, like almost like, like she's just like playing with Quoth and like won't commit to anything yeah. and like won't do anything. Yep. C- Celine, right from the beginning, you can tell that she, for whatever reason, and th- that's something that hadn't really <laughs> been explained how do i phrase that that's i i'm not really sure why she loved will so quickly at the beginning of yeah like when they met like she she fell in love with him like really fast and that i was kind of like why and so i thought that she was up to something for a long time um but i there there's been times where i've enjoyed their romance and there's been times where i've been not bored with it but i'm just like dude you should cut your losses and date uh janice like she is so cool she is so down to earth she's not royalty her dad isn't gonna kill you her dad would probably love him and it's i'm just like dude janice is such a better (laughs) option for your life like you don't have to deal with all this like royalty bullshit and like the king trying to like kill here's, you here's and like here's all the these problem, other though. people trying to kill you i'm like here's dude, the problem though what? here's the problem he doesn't love janice no he loves there, Celine. there was times there was times where i thought it could go either way where i'm like if he would just give up on Celine, he would definitely learn to love janice yeah. like would... i feel like i feel like Celine always held that place because like the you know he, it's like he gets, forbidden fruit yeah well yeah not even because he didn't even know at the beginning right yeah, like in right. the very because he he snuck he into the end of the first book yeah he snuck into her tent uh and was looking you know for notes or whatever he, he was trying to hurt the darians somehow somewhere and he yeah. sneaks in there and she like figures it out and she calls him and says like you know i like you you know what were you doing in here it's like i wasn't in here yeah, I, wasn't in I love that scene. And that, she's like, yes. That was yes, probably the most fact... endearing scene between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. yeah. Or really? one of them. No, well, not the most, but one, okay. the the, the right. first one that made me be like, oh, this is cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah fair. Fair enough. Um, But yeah. And and after that, though, you know, there was always like, it, I think Forbidden Fruit is a good way to put it, but he doesn't understand that it's forbidden in the sense like as we would think it's forbidden. Right. It's more of just like. Like they have just very a weird, you know, he's never been in love. She's never been in love. Yeah. Like it's kind of a weird concept of feelings, I guess. Right, right. And for some reason that like really like in, endeared me more to Celine, I think, because mm. there's moments, you know, when they fight and it's like the old thing in elementary school, you like, you like a girl, so you smack her and you run away, you know, <laughs> shit like that. Right. Dumb shit that doesn't yeah. make any sense. Right. But like your your feelings are different than your actions right um and they have lots of back and forth of hating each other and just fucking just i'll stab you but (laughs) i'll stab you because i love you you know it's some weird stuff yeah um so yeah yeah, i don't know i think the complexity to it was enough to like where i was invested like invested out you know wanting to just see what's gonna what's gonna play out yeah i i totally agree i think in the first book, I was totally on board for yeah. Celine, and I still like her. Like, I'm glad. Like, like I even texted you when they were like walking up to the chapel to like actually get married mm-hmm. by themselves. Yeah. I texted you like, "Let's fucking go!" Because yeah. I was like, yep. "Yes, he yep. did it." Um, but at the same time, like, man, Janice is popping up in the third book now, and I'm just like. Oh, like I just, I love, I love Janice as a character. I think that she's the way that they met where she was like being harassed by this, this guy. And 
um will was like not even being harassed he was the, the he, dude yeah, was, he was like, like selling her to, yeah he, he drugged he, her and then said you can go rape this girl right and will was like nope not on my fucking watch yeah not happening yeah and he like he like pulls her out the window and then he duels the guy and yes. like sticks a sword Murders through his throat the fuck out of him dude and dude he just has he has so much to deal with after that, with like this count <laughs> yeah. coming after him, and there it yep. was such a and the blood price, dude. Yeah, the blood price. Oh it was such a fantastic storyline. Yeah, and at first, like even after that, she wasn't like it wasn't like oh you saved me, I'm in love with you. It still took Janice a while to come around and be like, fuck, I really like him. And mm-hmm. like eventually she like kind of came around and yeah. like made her intentions clear to Will. And at that point, I was just like, and, and at that same point, Celine was like really far away. He like she was like all this stuff was happening with her where it's like he has no hope with Celine. Yeah. I'm like, God, just get with Janice, dude. She like like Janice likes him so much and it's yeah. just such a good, such a good story about them. Like like if if the story had been told the way it was and they had gotten together, I'm like, man, that would be like a perfect love story for me. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention something. It won't give anything away, but just tell me if it if you remember it. But sure. do you remember about the a ball? Oh, like where a, like a, where Janice like a and him go to the ball? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's in the second there, book. Yeah, there's a couple moments there where like, you know. Like, obviously, there's chemistry, but Will, there's one point where Will, Janice, like, comes to, she's like, you know, I, I understand that, like, you know, your eyes are not for me. Right. And I respect it. Right. Like, I think that's cool. Yeah. And I was like, dude, what a fucking awesome girl, dude. dude like, she's so great. She's, she's great. She is great. Oh, man. Respectful makes... and kind <laughs> and just, oh, it's awesome. She's, she's perfect she's the best girl and yeah. celine celine is great too but i like celine a lot she's she's probably my favorite character okay, or i should i shouldn't say favorite i'll say like she's very high up on my list right okay yeah i i did love i did love at the end of the second book where she's like you know everything with the count happens he gets his head chopped off yep. by her mm-hmm. and through this whole thing she realizes that because uh will tried to tell her like no your dad has this about the heart thing on you. Yeah, he, yeah yeah he's like he's he's got you like totally under yeah. his control um and she's like no he doesn't or whatever and sh- sh- they had like a huge argument about it and i remember when they had that argument i was like fuck dude you are fucking everything up yeah and like, then just stop when you're ahead dude yeah, i just thought the stop, same thing dude oh man like, you'll be able to show her eventually or sh- she's gonna get ordered to chop your head off which right Happens. exactly exactly <laughs> yeah um and then you know she they have this huge fight after spending this amazing weekend together and then at the end of the book she realizes it and she she kills the count or whatever he is and then they get together and then they come back to the chapel and she's like the last thing that i'm gonna do with my elementals is uh like set them free yeah and so she like calls them up and she's like you're set free now like i didn't know like yeah i, I didn't I, yep. I didn't know that you were like human once and that you're a yeah. spirit of uh his like will's grandpa's old like friend mm-hmm. or whatever like his friend was one of her spirits yep and so when she dismisses those it was it was just such a good moment because he's like i would have married you regardless and he's she's like i wouldn't have felt good about it though yeah and so i I like i like how she came around on that in the end there was also multiple times where i was like will just get yourself an elemental like who fucking cares (laughs) like man yeah yeah, i'm I'm, i was on the other side (laughs) of that spectrum i was so glad that he that he stuck to his I, roots and I'm, I'm glad he did too because it shows like you know his character yeah but there were some times like where the, the count offered him like an elemental and it would have made his life so fucking oh, easy dude. so much easier than it has been but yeah i was oh, glad man. that he um stuck with yeah that. And, and it just shows that like at the end of book two like he did it his way and he won yeah so yeah. it's like you know it's the same kind of thing that we see in like 
Dresden files and stuff where there's so many things Harry Dresden can do to make his life easier. And at the time you as the reader are like, just, just do it the bad way. Just do it yeah. the bad way. Yeah. Make your life easier. Yeah. Just get uh, it done. But he, he's like so stubborn about it. And you're like, mm-hmm. God damn it, Dresden. And then at the end of the day, he, uh, he does it his way. And, um, and he usually, usually he pulls it off. Yep. yep. Um, and so it's like, all right, all right. Um, so yeah, I like I like that Will stuck to his morals, but there was definitely times <laughs> where yeah. I was like, dude, just take the king's offer. Like just, yeah. just take his offer. For sure. Um I've got a I've got two questions for you and then I'm gonna have okay. to go. Okay. The first question is uh what do you think about the ring? Oh, with the tooth in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's super interesting because it's um it's a way for him to talk to his master without like it's it's just like his his wisdom and mm-hmm. like his knowledge. It's not actually him, but it seems like as he talks to the ring more, it kind of begins to have like that personality that his mentor once did you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so i'm wondering if the ring will eventually be able to like come full circle and because at the end of what was his grandpa's name i always forget it was uh aragorn aragorn Aragorn. Aragorn. yeah um at, at the end of aragorn's life it's like he like genuinely loved will like oh, he, had, totally. he had genuine feelings yeah. for him he'd never and tell you that he'd never he tell did. you that but he read he like his fucking his diary stupid fucking piece of shit yeah that's that was like if, if you guys are listening to this and have actually not read it like that's his whole personality yeah oh yeah for sure um and so yeah i i'm hoping that you know by by the end of aragorn's life he did even though he was like crotchety, he was still much more softened oh, yeah. towards oh, Will, yeah. and he was no, like he, he loved him a talking lot. Yeah. to him like as a person rather than as like a student. Yep. And it seems like maybe the ring will start doing that because little by little, I've noticed the ring like opening up to him more and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, I'm I'm interested to see to see where that goes. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't know cool. if I have too much more to say about it. No, that that's fine. Uh, second question is, what do you think about the Fey? I think your name's what's Ashlyn. the Ashlyn, and then uh, TL two, TL two, yeah, yeah. What yep. do you think about them? Um, you have I a whole lot or not much? Yeah, I I think they're fine. I think they're typical Fey, like they're typical, yeah. like crafty and um, like deceitful and. I think that Ashlyn is, I don't know. I'm going to take a stab in the dark. I could be Mm -hmm. totally wrong. Okay. But I think that Ashlyn is probably on the good side more than we think in Mm -hmm. like the, the first couple books, I think is where I'm at. She's like, she's got Will's now wife, apprentice, 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 to herself (laughs) you got Um, there i got there in the end (laughs) um and it seems like she's making her do a lot of the same steps that will had to do yep um and so i'm wondering if you know i i think it's easy for me as the reader to look at celine with her and be like oh man she's like treating her horribly she's gonna turn her into one of the fae and all this stuff but I'm kind of wondering if that's like not her plan at all. And she's just trying to turn her into the same kind of old age wizard that mm. Will is. And then like basically give her back to Will so that they can go on with like the rest of the story and, and do what they need to do. Both kind of being at like a similar level. level or, yeah. I, I think that's that's kind of the plan, but I, I could be totally wrong. Ashlyn could totally fuck everybody over, and yeah, I don't know. Well, you'll find out by the end of the third book. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the reason why I asked that was because I thought it was, you know, when he first encounters them in book one, right, it was totally by accident. 
Uh, and TL2 turns out to be his basically kind of his like removed aunt. Yeah. Um, and there was just some cool like nuances that you know. There was books... so much incest stuff in the first book. Not yeah, like not well, like direct incest, but just no, like well the I like, thought it the was fair, so funny. Just, the fair, you know, and it's it's explained in there too. Yeah, like they're just for sure. they're driven by their desires, right? Yeah. And so who gives a shit if I'm your aunt, like whatever? But yeah. But I thought there were some interesting things that like reading, you know, like the Dresden Files, or one of them was the Unbound Favors. Oh yeah. So like when you know tail two kissed will God, and he dude. said you're not allowed to you know i didn't give you permission she's like all right you get one un unbound favor and these unbound favors are you know when it comes to the fey you can you ask can for anything. ask for anything yeah kill yourself and they would do it permanently yeah so that was like just interesting to me that that would you know like factor in yeah like well just as a writer like leaving that much of like such a huge potential plot hole mm. you know where like something you know will could but but it gave him the choice right like it yeah. gave him the power to do basically whatever he wanted and the way that he used that kind of showed me i guess more of his character more of his personality yeah. which i'm sure was the goal yeah um yeah definitely when he when he made the uh the deal with ashlyn mm -hmm. I yeah in the second book sometime in the middle of the second book he made a deal with her and she's like she's like I could either she's like I'm either gonna ask to like take the girl or I'm gonna ask for an unbound favor yeah and and, and then but then she says either way I'll have what I want which is the girl right yeah yeah and which so, was like very ominous I'm like oh fuck dude like really yeah and then he's like and then he's like uh he takes the unbound favor and at that moment i was like what the fuck are, like just don't make the yeah. deal in the first yeah. place just yeah, don't make the real. deal so yeah i'm interested to see how that all kind of plays out and whatnot but yeah yeah i'm eager to eager to go on with the third book and and kind of see what happens and yeah i'm, looking I'm excited to it. i'm, I'm looking so excited i'm excited to get the text messages tomorrow yeah are you gonna? Do you already have the fourth book? Or are you gonna get I, it? I just, I just bought a credit pack on my account, so nice. it's okay. downloaded. Okay, cool. Yep. So you can use mine. It'll be in there. Sweet. Um. All right, guys. Well, we are gonna wrap it up there. Again, this was just a quick thing because we, you know, we read this. Well, we read a few books in the series, and we were like, okay, we just need to talk about this. Yeah, like we, we just need to. Need to like, <laughs> yeah. this, it's just one of those series that comes up every now and then where it's like okay let's just stop everything else and just do this yeah, and... yeah. which is so cool because when's yeah. the last time we did that dude right i it, dude. i don't know if i don't know if we ever have like because i feel like i no go ahead Maybe i was gonna you know. say there there's been a there's been a couple times where like i feel like i feel like i did that with red rising where like yeah. i i read like the first book and I was like, okay, I need to, there, there's a bunch of other stuff I was supposed to read. And I'm like, no, I think I'm just going to finish Red Rising. And so I just like burned my way through that. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of happened with, uh, you know, obviously we read King's Dark Tidings before we started the podcast, but yeah. I think that would have been another one of those series where it's oh, like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. If we would have found everything. it like, yeah. Yep. Yep. Totally. Read totally. that. Um. I don't know. I'm sure there's there's been other ones. Uh, Cradle was kind of one where it's like, yeah. oh, okay, we're really enjoying Cradle. Let's just do yeah. all of that. Finish it off, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I love that feeling. I love the feeling of, you know, just finding something new that clicks because I feel like it's so rare. It's so often to, it, it's so often that we like read something and we're like, that was a great book and I liked it. Yep, and then that's we move it. on. Yeah. And yeah. then, but every now and then something like this will come along where it's like, stop everything. <laughs> like, yeah. Screw everything <laughs> else. Cancel everything. I'm reading yeah. this. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. So, so yeah, we are, uh, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you, of course, can on Twitter, Discord, and Patreon, which are all linked in the description. Uh, also, liking and subscribing on this video on youtube helps us out a ton uh we got some stuff coming up 
after we finish this series, uh, we are going to do a Potter Watch episode zero, where we talk about just like our general feelings on Harry Potter before we actually start our, our read through of the series. We're just going to come on, hopefully with a guest. I think Bookborn had to back out of it, so she's not she's just got too much going on yeah. right now and so it'll probably i think she said until after the first of the year is probably when she's booked out till so we're probably going to hold off on warbreaker until then so i think we're going to do harry potter as one of the next episodes where we do um you know after we're after we're done with this series mm -hmm. we'll do our harry potter episode zero where we just talk in general terms how we feel about the books and the movies um, and then from there, we'll be doing our official Potter Watch episodes, which are read the first book, watch the first movie, talk about it. Read mm. the second book, watch the second movie, talk about it. Sweet. We're going to try to have a bunch of guests on for that and uh, and stuff, because I know that we have just so many people on Twitter who all love oh, yeah. Harry Potter, and oh, they yeah. really um, just kind of enjoyed <laughs> like seeing me go through it for the first time. Yep. They thought it was really funny. So... So yeah, we'll have a lot of them on. Uh, but then also one of our next episodes will be Side Jobs, the Dresden Files Side Jobs. And I'm so eager to get yeah. to that uh, because I, I'm excited to read the short stories, but also I want to read Cold Days so bad. <laughs> and we have to get through Side Jobs, and then we have to get through <laughs> Ghost Story, yeah. and then we can read <laughs> Cold Days. I can't wait for Ghost Story, dude. <laughs> Stoked. And so I'm just like... I'm like, okay, we get a little bit of enjoyment and a little bit of pain and then a lot of enjoyment with cold <laughs> days. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited for that. So, um, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, don't let your fey aunt kiss you. It's good advice for anybody. Yeah. No matter how anybody. old you are. You'll get an unbound favor. You don't yeah. want that. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And a big shout out to our first Night Angel tier patron, Shad Zaman. Thank you so much, man.